I actually I had made an appointment on campus with a local chaplain, a Christian chaplain um, at our university. I said, um, you know, like, I, I think I'm going to switch faith if you don't give me these answers. He just said, that's just faith. You just have to believe. What was the thing that intimidated you the most about uh, taking the final step into Islam? The fear of rejection. And it's still hard because, um, although I haven't been, like, the first years were very, very difficult. What impressed you the most about our Prophet <laughs> Who is Jenny Molendik Tivlili and can you tell us briefly about your life? Sure. I'm Canadian and I grew up in Canada. I had a lovely family life. I grew up in a Christian family um, with my mother and my father um, and I have one older brother. How was your life in regards to faith? What were you believing in? Um, so my family was Christian. Uh, we were, I mean, it was definitely a part of our life growing up. Uh, we always, I mean, we went to church every Sunday. I actually was very, very involved in the Christian church, especially in my youth. Um, I attended youth groups. I went on to be a camp counselor um, for summers at a time. Um, I was part of a worship team. I was taking courses. And I even considered actually going to Bible college for university. So yeah, faith was always alive in our home. It was a very big part of our lives. And then when I went, when I was about university age, I started to kind of drift away from faith and kind of explore, I guess, different things. I was looking into, I guess, the, the religion. I, I always had a belief in God, but I just decided not to practice anything for a while when I was in university. I still, I still believed in a creator, but um, wasn't practicing. What was the thing in Islam that appealed to you, appealed to your heart? I mean, I, th I really remember two specific incidents, I think, that were really significant in my search. So eventually when I decided, okay, I was going to look into Islam, and, and then I started to read more and, and really kind of take it seriously, there was a, a family that, I, that was attending this sports club that I was working at, and they had, given, they had gifted me a Qur'an once they learned I was looking into Islam. And they started to tell me about the Qur'an, and, uh, and of course I was reading it in English, but I was researching it as well, and they were telling me more about it. And I remember thinking about, like, listening to them talk about how the Qur'an had never been changed, even in 1400 years. And, and this was really significant for me because, you know, even as a Christian, in Christianity, there's this belief that God will protect His Word, but then there was no, there's no original gospel, there's no original text, and and you know even through historical like historical information, you can go back and you can see how man has manipulated the gospels, and this is you know public knowledge within Christian history, and and so and then here was the the Quran that you know in its Arabic form had never been changed in 1400 years, and and that was so, so significant for me because i really felt like if this is the word of god he's he's promised to to protect it and here it is protected and then the other thing actually which became came before this it was one of the things that started my search actually was so one of these initial conversations that i had had about islam i learned that the prophets of islam were the same as the prophets of christianity and i remember feeling so shocked because i mean i just didn't again i didn't have knowledge but i really didn't expect that because you know i think that the media often presents Islam as barbaric and cultish. And, and so then when I learned that it stemmed from the same Abrahamic faith, you know, that was really, really, really surprising to me. And it, and it made so much logical sense that the message of the prophets of, of Abraham, of Moses, of Noah would then be continued on um, through Jesus and then also eventually Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. What was the next step of your, you know, researches in Islam? How did you come to the point that you accepted Islam? Um, so it took months. I continued to have conversations with the first people that I, you know, ever contacted with about Islam. This family that was at the sports center that gave me the Quran, they kept insisting I come to the mosque with them. They wanted me to experience what the Muslim community was like. And so one day I went and Hamna and I made contact with other Muslims, Muslim women my age also, who had been raised in the West. Somebody, for example, whose mother was had found Islam later in life. And so she had grew, grown up in a home with a Christian father and a Muslim mother. That was really helpful. I, I really found I was able to relate to her story. And, and then I eventually, you know, I, I wanted to continue to seek information. So I was researching more online. And then I, I made contact with an organization that was in the city that I was living in at the time. And they provided literature for people who were looking into Islam. And so I got books from them um, and continued to read. And eventually it kind of just all really just started to make sense. I don't think that there was one specific moment, but there was just, you know, all of these things that kept building and building. 
And eventually I just couldn't deny it anymore as much as I was trying to. And then eventually there was a conference at the university I was attending and I would become Muslim there. So uh, what was the thing that intimidated you the most about uh, taking the final step into Islam? Yeah, I could say, I mean, two things probably. Um, one of them was definitely like the fear of what would happen with my family and my friends. The fear of rejection. And it's still hard because um, although I haven't been like the first years were very, very difficult. Um, but uh, I mean, it, there was there was definitely years of, of struggle and um, and being different from them and how they would how they would accept that. And if they would accept that, that was um, that was really, really difficult. But then also within my community, because my second my second major fear was the fear of hijab. And it was very, very important to me that if I was to become Muslim, that I was going to wear hijab. And for the longest time, I think I was probably Muslim um, in my heart. Like I had probably accepted the faith of, <clears throat> of Islam, but I wasn't willing to proclaim it because I knew what that meant. I knew that if I did that, then I was going to have to give up everything and live as a Muslim, which is really important to me because I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't accept. Like I, I had already, I, it was very clear to me that the Quran was the word of Allah. If the Quran was the word of Allah and I knew that to be true, then how could I then deny what he had written inside? And as a Christian, I was very, one of the reasons I kind of put distance between myself and Christianity and specifically the church was because I felt like that there was this inconsistency between my faith and the way that I lived my life. And not just myself, I think that was largely a part of the Christian community. Um, you had people that were going to church on Sunday and then living their lives, you know, just in partying and alcohol and extravagance throughout the week. And, and I knew that it, if I became Muslim, that that wasn't the way that I wanted to live my life and that I wanted to adhere um, to the desires of what Allah wanted for me and for Muslims. And that meant hijab. And I think, you know, of course, I was fearful as a Muslim, like uh, as, a, as a woman, you know, about beauty, the idea of beauty and how that would change, how I would feel. Because so much of my identity was, was based on other people's opinions about my beauty, right? But at the same time, also, I was really, I knew that it would be a visual representation of my faith. And all of a sudden, this personal belief system, you know, that it would become public. And at a time when Islam was so rejected and, and feared and hated, then what would that mean for me? And then the people that were closest to me, how would they react? So those two things were, you know, they were really a big factor and they held me back, I think, for, for a while before I accepted Islam. When I basically had realized that Islam was true and that I wanted to become Muslim, I started to make dua. Even before I had given my shahada, I, you know, I just started to pray for Allah to soften my heart towards the idea of hijab. Um, because for the longest time, I was like, okay, I'll become Muslim, but I won't wear it. And that just, it just didn't sit right for me. And so, yeah, I just, I just prayed desperately for Allah to soften my heart towards it because couldn't imagine how I would ever have the strength to do it. And I, and I didn't personally have the strength. It was only from Allah. And um, yeah, and so alhamdulillah. And then the weekend leading up to the, the weekend that I converted, I actually I had made an appointment on campus with a local chaplain, a Christian chaplain um, at our university. And I sat down with him and I had a list of questions and I had asked him, I said, um, you know, like, I, I think I'm going to switch faiths if you don't give me these answers. And predominantly, they were related to, related to uh, the Bible and the Gospels and how how the Bibles, uh, the books of the Bible were chosen and um, and changes that had happened to the Bible. Um, and I said, if you don't give me answers to these questions, I believe I'm going to change my faith. And um, you know, and I and he said, that's just faith. You just have to believe. And I I remember leaving that meeting just feeling so brokenhearted and shocked that I had just told this person I I like I had entrusted him, you know, with. With at that point, I thought my hereafter, right? Like, and he was just like, you just have to believe. And it just didn't make sense to me. And then that same weekend, there was a conference at our university. And uh, there was a, an imam that had come from England. He was also a convert. I went the, after the first day of the conference and I met with him and I asked him the same questions and pertaining to Christianity. And alhamdulillah, he was able to answer from a historical perspective, not from a Muslim bias, but really just from the Christian history books and you know, he's like, if you were to go to a Bible college and, you know, this is what they would teach you, this is what would be in the books. And, and it just gave me such a sense of peace. And, and I was like, okay, finally, somebody has given me answers. Finally, this makes sense. So, you know, and then he said, like, let's, after, you know, hours of discussion, he said, okay, well, go, like, do you believe that Allah is, you know, the, is the creator? And I said, yeah, that's always made sense for me. But he said, and do you believe that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the final messenger? And I said, yeah, that makes sense. And he said, okay, well, go make wudu and, and like, give your shahada. And I was just like, no, like, that's, that, that can't happen. Because, again, I was at this point, like, I, you know, I, 
it was like make or break time. You know, like in my mind, I was just like, okay, this is it. Like, I've got to make this decision. But I was working at the university as well. And I knew that like, it was Friday. And I was like, if I do this, that means Monday I'm at, like, I'm at work and I have hijab on. And what am I going to do about my friends? And what about the other place that I work? And, and all of these things, I, you know, I said, no way that night. And then the big thing, actually, I think that gave me the strength to, to two days later, then turn around and accept Islam was that I went and I talked with two of my best friends that evening. And it's, it's so funny to me that it still makes me so emotional every single time I tell this story and every time I talk about it, because I think it's just this feeling of relief. Um, because I said to them, I thought, you know, I'll, um, I've been looking into Islam. They weren't aware of it. My family wasn't aware of it. I hadn't told anybody. And so I said to them, one of them was a really strong Christian. One of them was kind of uh, turning into an atheist. And I, I said, like, I'm going to become Muslim. And I've been researching Islam. And they said that that was OK. And, uh, and I was really afraid what it would mean for our friendship, because um, not only for the faith systems, but so much of my, my life with them was involved around like the typical West, Western university weekend. Um, like parties and one of my friends, she was a kickboxer and so she was, you know, she was competing in, in bars with alcohol and stuff and, you know, how would she feel if I would no longer support her and accept her and be a part of these things and what would that mean for our friendship and would she feel like I was a contributing part of that and, but when they gave me that assurance, it was enough strength for me to then, you know, go home and, and think about it more and make dua and, and then I connected with the people from the Muslim community that I had been in touch with. And, and I said to them, you know, I, it looks like I'm going to become Muslim. And uh, alhamdulillah, two days later at that conference on May 14th, I did. I gave my shahada and became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. So were you able to put the hijab on right away? Yeah. So that day, um, the one sister that I had met at the mosque, as I mentioned earlier, she came over and she came. She brought this white piece of fabric. I wanted to wear white to like symbolize like new start. And it was just a white piece of fabric. And she you know, helps me kind of wrap myself in it. And uh, yeah, it was a mess. But alhamdulillah, I, I put it on that day and alhamdulillah, I haven't taken it off. Alhamdulillah. May Allah never test me in that. How did your family and your social circle react to your Muslim identity? My two closest friends, as I mentioned, they were supportive, as were a couple of my other really close friends. My family, my dad is a police officer, was a police officer. And so he was, although on the phone, he was kind of quite silent and stuff initially. He really, he really struggled afterwards and he wrote me a very, very long letter. It was basically the first website he found that was anti-Islam with all the basic arguments that everybody's familiar with, verses of Quran that have been taken out of context and, you know, just basically told me how this was a religion of violence and a religion of terror and, and sent me this letter. And, and then we really struggled to have a relationship for quite a few years afterwards. So it, even after I was married, he was very, very distant, very suspect, I think, of of the choice that I had made. My mom was very concerned for my well-being as a woman. Basically, I, you know, I think she just thought that that was going to be my, <laughs> that was going to be my life. I was going to, you know, eventually go to a Muslim country and I was going to get stuck there. And, you know, and she was very concerned for that and my, and for women's rights. I think the one thing that helped her was I was very involved with the feminist community um, at the university that I was at. And, you know, she was like, well, how could you possibly be Muslim if, you know, if these were your, these are your ideas and these are your views. And then I was like, you know, mom, that should give you some peace about it. If you know that this is like, these are my belief systems and you know that this is like, I stand for, you know, the rights of women, then I must have found something like that in this, right? I, I must have found support and women's rights within Islam. Otherwise I wouldn't forsake that, you know? And so she did some research on her own and, and alhamdulillah, our, our relationship's been good. School and work were a bit of a different story. I was taken aside by my faculty and my professors. And when I went back to university, I converted at the end of school. So we had all of summer. I also got married a few months after. And um, so when I went back to university in the fall, I was Muslim and I was also married. They pulled me aside and there was about four of my professors and we were in a room alone together. And they basically had an intervention and asked me if there was something wrong and what had happened. And they were very concerned. and. Yeah, it was very uncomfortable and it was, it felt very unfair because the only reason they were even privy to the information that I had become Muslim was because I was wearing hijab. So yeah, so that was challenging. And it was actually that incident that made me start to consider changing my career path because I just, uh, it was such a small community and a small group that work as sign language interpreters. And I just really felt like 
I, I, I felt so violated, actually. That's the word that I could use. And then the country club, the sports club that I was working at, lots of people, I think, had made comments to the administration about their, they didn't feel comfortable about, because I was working at the front desk. It was a, a very elite space, very elite country club. And I think that uh, lots of people just, you know, they were not comfortable with having a, like a covered Muslim person at the front desk. So there were some complaints there. And then shortly thereafter, I, I moved anyway. And that was that. Were the Islamic practices like making uh, Salah five times a day or fasting for a whole month? It was difficult for you at first? This is funny, actually, because um, before I became Muslim, I had this, um, well, I knew I was going to fast, actually, because so as soon as I started to look into Islam and I learned that people were fasting, I was like, okay, I'll try that. I was like, sure, no problem. So fasting kind of didn't seem like an issue. But I had decided when I started to look into Islam, all of a sudden I had this like this strong urge that I needed to learn how to pray as a Muslim. And so even though I wasn't Muslim, I was learning how to pray and I was starting to pray. I, I don't know for how long it was, but certainly before I had become Muslim for a significant period of time, I, I was praying five, five times a day, even though I hadn't given my shahada. Of course, I didn't speak Arabic and I didn't really know how to pray. I had asked, you know, some Muslims that I had known. And so I had this book and I would read it and I, I would read my prayer from it. And so I would pray with this book. And I remember specifically that the morning prayer, it would take me 45 minutes <laughs> to pray, which um, it should be just a couple of minutes, right? Like, you know, like, so yeah, so that was, uh, I mean, that, that part was challenging. <laughs> how did you manage to keep your faith? I mean, I want to say, like, it's, it's by Allah, you know, honestly, because one of the things that I still pray for all the time uh, is that Allah will allow me to die on this faith. Because, you know, it's something that we take for granted. And I think that we think, you know, we think, okay, I found this faith and that I will always be Muslim, but Allah knows, you know, and um, there are people that are Muslim their whole lives and in their last moments, they abandon Islam or they lose it. And, you know, I'm, I just pray that that's, that will never happen to me or those whom I love or in our community. But the thing is, is also that I just really love Islam. And, uh, and I just absolutely sincerely believe from the bottom of my heart that it's truth. And once you see truth, you can't turn away from it. And, uh, yeah, alhamdulillah. And then, Uh, apart from that, like I have, I have a lovely support system in my spouse. Down the road, I've I've met Hamdanah, some wonderful Muslims. But really, at the end of the day, I'm just constantly reminded about, like how beautiful Islam is and how true it is. So, uh, what is the best way to call people to Islam? I mean, I think definitely is. I think if you know to look at the example of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, he was the best example for mankind. And I, you know, if we know who he is and if we follow him in his way, then we'll be doing the right thing and it will be showing people Islam. So with kindness and love and to calling to the oneness of Allah, but with patience and respect. And I think, you know, that as Allah says in the Quran, that if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he was hard-hearted, that, you know, the people would have turned away from him. And I think that we always need to live in that way. And There's so much misinformation and disinformation about Islam out there that as horrific as it is and as hard as it is for the Muslim community, as long as we are living according to Islam and according to the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in some ways it's doing us a favor because really people then they think something about Islam, but then they see the Muslims, inshallah, if we live in accordance um, with the faith. And then it changes their heart and th it strikes the need for them to research or to a curiosity. And I think that as long as we are adhering to our faith, then inshallah, that, that will be a, a witness for us. What impressed you the most about our Prophet <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I just... He's just the best of mankind. I am. Um, it would be unfair and a disservice to him to choose one thing. If there was a chance for you to speak to all the non-Muslims in the world, what would you like to say to them? Just, uh, just be open-minded and just like read about Islam. Because I think that for so many or so often we, we think we know about Islam because we've seen it on the news, but I think that it's really important that we just, you know, just you know, half an hour, five minutes, I don't know, even just to just research and like, what is Islam? And I think that people would be surprised, honestly, in terms of what is the belief system, what it's, it's history. I think that the more that I started to research Christianity, the more I was like, why the heck have I believed this for so long? And I, and I really do truly believe that anybody 
any Christian that actually takes the time to, to study Christianity and what it is like in a, in a really in-depth way, I don't think they would stay Christian, honestly, because it just doesn't make sense. If we think about specifically the Gospels, and you know, as a Christian, if you read the Bible, right, if Christians even read the Bible, often it's read in a chronological, like at the, you start at the beginning and you go to the end. And it was when I was looking into Islam that I was really encouraged to read specifically the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, side by side and to go through, read it verse by verse. And when you do that, you really actually start to see that there's major discrepancies that happen. And then the learning that Jesus himself never calls himself God. And that the more that I started to research, I was just like, what? Like, what is this? And why have I never learned any of this? And, and, and I, I felt really cheated. And so, yeah, so once I started to read that, then of course I was like, yeah, this, this doesn't make any sense. But I'd never been put into a situation where I had to question it. Christianity was just faith. And because that was all I'd been exposed to, it was just, it made sense, you know? Be brave, learn about Islam, uh, don't be afraid to, uh, to be different. You know, Allah will, Allah will make a way for you, Allah will make it easy. Well, thank you so much. We were really honored to have you here. Yeah. It was a really yeah, beautiful interview. And yeah. thanks for sharing our deepest fears and thoughts with, with us, really. Thank you. May it be of benefit, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah, it will be inshallah.